Hello and welcome to this continuing first look exploring session looking at English Men for My Money. Uh, which is a play by, as he turns the page to just double check because it's not a name we conjure very often, William Houghton. <laughs> it would be awkward if I, you know, on the few occasions when we actually <laughs> say his name, I get it wrong. That would be awful. I suppose it could be Houghton, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Yeah, alternatively, it is known as A Woman Will Have Her Will. Um, and it's a play from the uh, late 1590s, and uh, we've uh, we've uh, been finding some uh, good good stuff in here. Some stuff we have to be a bit careful about, but uh, all, uh, we've also been finding say, some very 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 good uh, potential comic uh, business that's been going on here. We've we've got a sort of handle on the plot of uh, in uh, various suitors for uh, various ladies and a father figure who is getting in the way all very new comedy uh so we're going to see how it progresses as we go into further into act two going from act two scene two reading the play today reading pissarro the father figure is hi my name's elizabeth amissu and i'm an author based in romford uh, reading Harvey and Vandal, I think it's two uh, opposing suitors, so hopefully they don't <laughs> talk to each other, is... Rachel, actor on the East Coast. Uh, reading Marina and Bellman is... Sarah Blake, actor, writer and director based in Germany. Uh, reading Matea is... Helen Good, a historian currently in Hull. Uh, reading De Leon and more is... Hi, I'm Alexander Romanoff and I've been disinherited, so it's fine. Uh, otherwise known uh, normally uh, in these sessions as Eric, uh, <laughs> just for anyone who is confused, including us. Reading Walgrave and Alvero is... Alan Scott, based in Suffolk. Uh, reading Anthony and Hayam is... Hello, Dan, actor based in Montpellier, France. And Hayam may occasionally talk to himself uh, uh, as there are occasional clashes with the dialogue, but they're quite minor, I think. Uh, reading Laurentia is... Hello, my name is Lynn Freitas. I am a teacher. I live in the northwestern United States. And reading Frisco today is... Hi, uh, Lois, retired academic living in London. And also in the room as uh, as a uh, commentator without portfolio as a voice <laughs> in the ether is Julie Hilverson, podcaster, audio dramatist um, and mad actor. <laughs> and I'm your host, Robert Christ, and I'll be reading stage directions and generally moving everything forward in a sort of forwardy kind of way. Act two, scene one is where we left off last time. So we're going to continue with act two, scene two, which seems logical and, and reasonable. Uh, let's see how that goes. Uh, act two, scene two, enter Frisco. Ah, sir. Now I know what manner of thing Paul's is. I did so moral afore what it was out of all count. For my master would say, would I had Paul's full of gold. My young mistress and Grimkin Taylor would wish they had Paul's full of needles. I once asked my master half a yard of frieze to make me a coat. And he cried, whoo, holiday, it was big enough to make Paul's a nightgown. I've been told that Duke Humphrey dwells here and that he keeps open house and that a brave sort of uh, cameleers dine with him every day. Now, if I could see any vision in the world towards dinner, I would set in a foot. But the best is, as the ancient English Roman orator saith, Salome men, a misers, housewives, and uh, so forth. Uh, the best is that I have great store of company that do nothing but go up and down and make a grumbling together that the meat is so long making ready. Well, if I could meet this scurvy Frenchman, they should stay me for I would be gone home. Enter Anthony. I beseech you, monsieur, give me audience. Uh, uh, what would you have? What should I give you? Uh, pardon, sir, my uncivil a presumptuous intrusion who endeavor nothing less than to provoke or exasperate you against me. Mm. They say a word to the wise is enough, so by this little French that he speaks, I see he is the very man I seek for. Uh, sir, I pray, what is your name? Ah, I am nominated Monsieur Lamuche, and rest at your bon service. Mm. 
I understand him partly yay and partly nay. Uh, can you speak French? Uh, content pour vous, monsieur, madame. Uh, if I could not, sir, I should ill understand you. Um, you speak the best French that ever trod upon a shoe of leather. <laughs> Nay, I can speak more languages than that. Um, this is Italian, is it not? Uh, Nelly Slordi Cardizana? Uh, yes, sir. And you speak it like a very natural. Ah, I believe you well. Now for Dutch. Uh, Ducky de do, what have you gebrocht? Oh, I pray you stop your mouth before I never heard such Dutch before broached. Hey, I think you've not met with no peasant. Here you, uh, Master Mouse, uh, for so your name is, I take it. Um, I have considered of your learning in these aforesaid languages and find you reasonable, so, so. Now, this is the matter. Can you take the ca case to teach these tongues to two or three gentlewomen of mine acquaintance, and I will see you paid for your labor? Yes, sir, and uh, that most willingly. Uh, why then, uh, Master Mouse, uh, to their use I entertain me, which had not been but for the troubles of the world that I myself have no leisure to show my skill. Uh, well, sir, if you'll please to walk with me, I'll bring you to them. And exit. I, uh, the, this seed uh, had some fun, fun stuff in it. Um, uh, the... Uh... <laughs> uh, some yes, a continuation of certain themes, um, and of course, uh, moving on the plot a little bit as well. So it's not entirely here as random comic business. Uh, Lois, yeah, I don't know if everybody knows what dining with Duke Humphrey means, but uh, uh, I think Humphrey of Gloucester's tomb was there, and to dine with Duke Humphrey essentially meant not to dine at all. I mean, just to spend the whole lunch hour walking in Paul's, that is, of course, St. Paul's Cathedral. I mean, that's obviously where this is meant to be taking place. So anyway, Frisco doesn't know that that's what it means, which is why he's wondering why, where the food is. Mm, yes, I believe it's actually, it, it was a, a common mistaken belief that it was a, it was a different uh, uh, Humphrey, uh, I believe, uh, oh. or, or, so, uh, or something similar. I'm looking at a footnote here. Um, but yes, it was a generally held thing uh, that you could, mm -hmm. uh, you could dine there. Um, oh, and mm -hmm. that people, reprobates would hang around in that general general location. Mm. Of course, it's old St Paul's. It's all gone now. Mm. Put mm. another one up in its place. It's not as good. Um... The mouche is a fly, not a yeah. mouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Frisco doesn't know any French. <laughs> no. I'm just going to... Yeah. Wow. Mm. Well, you know, he, he immediately goes, you know, uh, uh, you know, can you speak French? And, you know, Monsieur Madame. <laughs> Um, you know, hedging his bets there, um, <laughs> Lynn. Yeah, so, yeah, mush means fly, and later on, Ben Johnson will write a play where the, the, the servant is named Mosca, which also means fly, so is there something significant about what does a fly represent? Who knows? Lois, Helen, help me out. Well, um, I don't know, a parasite? That, that's certainly what Mosca is. Something that, you know, lives off uh, uh, other people or, you know, I don't know if he's thinking of something yeah. like a flea as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But certainly Mosca in Valpone is a parasite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I wonder if that, you know, that word had a significance around now that, that mm -hmm. so Amush and Mosca have something in common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting the three phrases that uh, Frisco is using here when he's talking, you know, the French almost mm. could be you know usable in a context you know like he's mm. heard it somewhere and got it a bit garbled the mm. italian is clearly to um mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> one yeah. wonders if he's used that in a certain context before if just uh, <laughs> um inquiring after a courtesan um mm. and the the dutch as far as you can tell is just just <laughs> words <laughs> random noises um, well what have you brought is what have you brought i think isn't it but uh, the ducky do do is certainly gibberish yeah. So uh, it's a fascinating m m mash of things. Uh, Helen. Yes, but Francis, who speaks Dutch, was saying yesterday that he was staggered at how good the Dutch was. Yes, but, but that's by the Dutch character rather than by uh, Frisco. Yeah, that, that is mm. absolutely true. He, mm. It's probably on a par with the French, his French mm. uh, or Alan. Italian. I still can't work out what Frisco's on. 
he's a clown. He's 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 creating business. Yeah. That's 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 what he's on. Yeah. The sound of his own voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, on which note, uh, we'll move forward. Um, act two, scene three. Uh, enter uh, the three little maids from school. Uh, enter <laughs> Laurentia, Marina, and Mathea. Sit till dinner's done. Not I, I swear. Shall I stay till he belch into mine ears those rustic phrases and those Dutch French terms, stammering half sentences, dog bolt eloquence? And when he hath no love, forsooth, why then, he tells me cloth is dear at Antwerp, and the men of Amsterdam have lately made a law that none but Dutch as he may traffic there. Then he stands still and studies what to say, and after some half hour, because the ass hopes as he thinks, I shall not contradict him, he tells me that my father brought him to me and that I must perform my father's will. Well, Goodman Goose Cap, when thou wooest again, thou shalt have simple ease for thy love's pain. Alas, poor wrench, I sorrow for thy hap, to see how thou art clogged with such a dunce. Forsooth, my sire hath fitted me far better. My Frenchman comes upon me with the sa sa sa, sweet madame, pardonnez moi, I pray. And then out goes his hand, down goes his head, swallows his spittle, frizzles his beard, and then to me, ah, pardonnez-moi, Mistress Matea, if I be bold to mac so bold at you. Think it will go that spur me dust up you, that canst knit off so good a true lover. Madame Celestura de la, I know not what. Do off pray God that me would love her. And then he reckons a catalogue of names of such that love him and yet cannot get him. Hey, but your monsieurs, but a mouse in cheese can bear with my signor. He can tell of Lady Venus and her son, blind Cupid, of the fair Zilla that was loved of Glaucus, and yet scorned Glaucus, and yet loved King Minos, yet Minos hated her, and she yet holp him, and yet he scorned her, yet she killed her father to do him good, yet he could not abide her. Oh, nay, he'll be bawdy too in his discourse, and when he is so, he will take my hand and tickle the palm. Oh. Wink with his one eye, gape with his mouth, and 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 hold thy tongue. I prithee, here comes thy father. Enter Pissarro, Alvero, uh, Vandal, De Leon, uh, Harvey, Walgrave, and Hayam. So all the suitors and dad. Unmannerly, untaught, unnurtured girls. Do I bring gentlemen, my very friends, to feast with me, to revel at my house? that their good likings may be set on you, and you, like misbehaved and sullen girls, turn tail to such as many advance your states, I, I shall remember it, when you think I do not. I am sorry, gentlemen, your cheers no better, but what did want at board excuse me for, and you shall have amends be made in bed, to them, friends, to them, they are none but yours, for you I bred them, for you brought them up, for you I kept them, and you shall have them. I hate all others that resort to them. Then rouse your bloods, be bold with what's your own, for I and mine, my friends, be yours or none. Enter now Frisco and Anthony. Uh, Gay, good morrow, sir. I brought you Monsieur Mouse here to teach my young mistresses. I assure you, forsooth, he is a brave Frenchman. Welcome, friend. Welcome. My man, I think, hath had the full resolve thee of my will. Monsieur Delion, I pray question him. I tell you, sir, tis only for your sake that I do mean to entertain this fellow. Thoughts of all ill luck, how came these here? Now am I posed, except the wenches help me. I have no French to slap them in the mouth. See the luck of a good fellow, poor Anthony. 
could ne'er have sorted out a worser time. Now will the pack of all our sly devices be quite laid ope, as one undoes an oyster. Frank Hyham and Mad, ne and Mad Ned fall to your muses to help poor Anthony now at a pinch, or all our market will be spoiled and marred. Top man lets us alone, I warrant you. Monsieur, vous êtes très bienvenu. De quel pays êtes-vous? <laughs> well, that's you, sure, he says. How do men call you? Uh, Monsieur Lamouche? Sister! Help, sister! That's honest Anthony! And he answers your wooer, cujus contrarium. Monsieur, vous n'entendez pas. Je, je ne je demande point votre nom. Monsieur de Leon, he that made your shoes made them not in fashion. They should have been cut square at the toe. Madame, my shoe made the square toe. What be that? Why, sauce box? How now, you unreverent minx? Why, in whose stable hast thou been brought up to interrupt a man in the midst of a speech? Monsieur de Leon, disquiet not yourself. But as you have begun, I pray proceed to question with this countryman of yours. That me shall do très bien, but the uh, bella madonna, the jeune gentlewoman, uh, do monstre something of amour to speak about me. Uh, it bores uh, Monsieur Michel say, but and but uh, two, three, four, five words uh, to this François uh, or oh, sous uh, so Monsieur La Mouche. Um, quelle partie de France étiez-vous né? Francis. Ned. Oh, let me come. Master Pizarro, we have occasion of affairs, which calls us hence with speed. Wherefore, I pray, defer this business till some fitter time, and to perform what at the exchange we spoke of. A blessing on that tongue, said Anthony. Yes, marry, gentlemen. I will, I will. Alvaro, to your task. Fall to your task. I'll bear away those three who, being here, would set my daughters on a merry pin. Then cheerily try your locks, but speak and speed, for you alone, say I, shall do the deed. Exuant Pissarro and the three Englishmen. I uh, hear you, Master Mouse. Uh, did you dine at Paul's with the rest of the gentlemen there? <clears throat> no, sir. I am yet undined. Hmm. Methinks you should have a reasonable good stomach then by this time. As for me, I can feel nothing within me from my mouth to my codpiece, but all empty. Wherefore, I think it a piece of wisdom to go in and see what more than hath provided for our dinner. Master Mouse, will you go in? <sighs> With as good a stomach and desire as yourself. Let's pass in then. And exuant Frisco and Anthony. It's a long scene, so we're going to pause here uh, just to take in the sights. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the 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 three sisters, Moscow, Moscow, always Moscow, uh, come in and. Um, basically attack their their of their suitors i particularly liked the uh, the the agony of the bit at the end he will take my hand and tickle <laughs> the palm and wink and it's just uh yeah. <laughs> um yeah it's just so icky um and then uh, yes we've uh, we've got anthony being introduced of course as this french tutor and he doesn't actually know any french and unfortunately there's a frenchman in the room i don't know how good the french is by the for the frenchman um, it seemed uh, it seemed reasonably secure for my uh, E and GCSE French. Uh, so uh, yeah, it seemed to flow reasonably well. Um, and everyone else has to sort of rescue him and change the subject and be a bit rude. Uh, thoughts in the room about the the scene so far, uh, Lynn? Yeah, I was really struck for some reason by Pizarro's speech about you know my my daughters are for you three. I bred them for you. I brought them up for you like they're livestock or show dogs or something. I found that really troubling. Yeah. Is it just me? Am I overreacting to that? Well, I mean, it, I, I don't know whether it's it's the question of, you know, because 
how much of an absurd figure he is and how you know you know because we know he's not going to win probably i mean it's a comedy so we assume uh these suitors aren't going to he's not going to get his way um mm. so you know tonally within the 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 the, the uh, production maybe less so but yeah he's he's not a great person <laughs> Other Julia. thoughts on that? Julia has a hand up. Wrong. Oh, right. Uh, yes, uh, 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 yes, Julie. Um, I just, a couple of us remarked on it. I, I loved the being clogged with the, the Dutchman. Um, <laughs> oh, clogged with such a dunce, but I mean, wouldn't choose Maha. Hmm. Yes, there's the, it, this. This is a text that's actually throwing lots of little jokes at us um, that you know we may be missing as we're going along because mm. of you know shifts of things and uh, society and and stuff. Mm. But they are there. It, you know, he's trying to pack in quite a lot of gags mm. as we go. Whether they land or not is a different matter. But um... uh, Elizabeth, I like the way this scene kind of turned the sort of xenophobic stuff on its head because we have Frisco who's trying to speak these different languages and doing it very kind of you know very struggling um and that's kind of a source of humor for us and usually it's like usually it's let's laugh at the foreigners as they try to speak English and this time it's like let's let's laugh at Frisco as he tries to speak other languages and I like that I like this is the one of the few times that I've seen it turned on its head like that mm. and Anthony has exactly the same problem because you know he doesn't speak a word of French he's there pretending to be a Frenchman um and you know that that, that total absence of um you know any any education on that front um catches him out completely lovely let's let's uh, take the cuddles up on the scene uh, a little bit more we've had a lot of people exiting but the uh, the 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 three sisters and their three suitors not the english suitors the other suitors are all in the room together let's see how awkward this gets Honsegu, doctor for what cause for why bed also much grotely strange Ixeg you what? If that gi speak to me, is that gi love me? <laughs> is it that I care not for you? Is it that your breath stinks? If your breath stinks not, you must learn sweeter English, or I shall never understand your suit. Pardonnez-moi, madame. With all my heart, so you offend no more. Uh, is that an offence to be amorous to one belle gentlewoman? I, sir, see, your belle gentlewoman cannot be amorous of you. Then, if I were as that belle gentlewoman's lover, I would trouble her no further, nor be amorous any longer. Madonna, yet the belleza of her the face. Beauty, the form of all the corpo, <coughs> may be such that no pericolo, no ultima chance, can make her leave her dolce vita. But, Signor Alvaro, if the periculo or mal chance were such that she should love and live with another, then the dolce visage must be left in spite of the lover's teeth, whilst he may whine at his ill fortune. That's var, maestris. For it is untrue, saying they vint he taught they fair life lies scratched in gut. And I think so too. <laughs> you are like to scratch there, but never to claw any of my sister's love away. And Sally, your sister, do against her father's will for your father's sect that ik sal heb bar for mine wife. I think not so, sir, for I never heard him say so. But I'll go in and ask him if his, if his meaning be so. Ark, sister, Signor Alvaro said that I am the fairest of all us three. <laughs> Believe him not, for he'll tell any lie. If so, he thinks he may be pleased thereby. Come, with me. 
Oh, sorry. <coughs> Come go with me and never stand prating here. <coughs> I have a jest to tell thee in thine ear. Shall make you laugh. Come, let your senior stand. I know there's a wench in all this town scoffs at him more or loves him less than thou. <coughs> Master Vondo, I say, as much I say for you, if needs you marry with an English lass, woo her in English, or she'll call you ass. Ah, that's a French cog, sure, I think. There's ne'er a wench in France, not half so fond, to woo and sue so for your monsieurship. Par ma foi, madame, she does think there is no wench so dure as you, for, for the fille was a uh, great dollars, tendre and amorous for me to love her. Now me think that I, being such a fine man, you should have loved me. So think not I, sir. <sighs> but so thinks he, uh, other demoiselle. Nay, I'll lay my love to your command that my sisters think not so. How say you, Sister Mal, and how now, gentlemen? Is this your talk? What, beaten in plain field? Where be your maids? Nay, then I see their loving humour fades, and they resign their interest up to me. And yet I cannot serve for all you three. But lest two should be mad that I love one, you shall be all alike and I'll love none. The world is scant when so many jackdaws hover about one course with greedy paws. If needs you have for me, stay till I am dead, carrion for crows, Mathea for her Ned. And so farewell, we sisters do agree to have our wills, but ne'er to have you three. And the three sisters by now have all exited. Madame, attendez, madame. Chalet, do she mock de vous in such sort? Oh, the pestilence. Oh, if that you can night, they say in clay, they sprecht well, excel her father, say how is to pass, go common. Enter Pissarro. Hey, Pilate, see here, signors. The father. Now, friends, now, gentlemen, how speeds your work? Have you not found them shrewd, unhappy girls? Master Pizarro, the doctor, Maestris Laurentia, call the Dale, the Ace, for that I can night English breaking. And that we shall no parlor. That we shall no have our dem for the wife. Are they so lusty? Dare they be so proud? Well, I shall find a time to meet with them. In the mean season, pray frequent my house. And enter Frisco running. Oh, now, Sirrah, whither are you running? About a little tiny business. What business, ass? Indeed, I was not sent to you, and yet I was sent after the three gentlemen that dined here to bid them come to our house at ten o'clock at night when you were abed. Ha! Ah, what is this? Can it be true? What? Art thou sure the wenches bade them come? Ah, oh, so they said, unless their minds be changed since, for a woman is like a weathercock, they say, and I am sure of no more than I am certain of. Uh, but I'll go in and bid them send you word whether they shall come or no. No, Sirrah. Stay you here. But one word more. Did they appoint them come one by one, or else all together? All together? Lord, that such a young man as you should have no more wit. Why, if they should come together, one could not make room for them. But coming one by one, they'll stand there if there were twenty of them. How this news glads me and revives my soul. How say you, sirs? What, will you have a jest worth the telling? Nay, worth the acting? I have it, gentlemen. I have it, friends. Signor Pizarro, very gracia, what man I saw we have? God fill the valley. What bon do you know, Signor Pignaro? Dishadinoa, 
Signor de Pizarro. Oh, that youth so sweet so soon should turn to age. Were I as you, why, this were sport alone for me to do. Hark ye, hark ye. Here my man saith that the girls have sent for Master Hyam and his two friends. I know they love them dear and therefore wish them late at night to be here to revel with them. Will you have a jest to work my will and give your longings rest? Why then, Master Vandal and you two shall soon at midnight come, as they should do, and court the wenches, and to be unknown, and taken for the men whom they alone. So much effect, each one shall change his name. Master Vandal, you shall take Hyam, and you, young Harvey, and Monsieur Delion, Ned, and under shadows be of substance sped. How like you this device? How think you of it? Oh, the brave, the, the galliard, the vis, uh, missile come by the, the night and God refer the Amlois gentle homme. Uh, did you, did you see, Monsieur Pizarro? You are in the right, sir. I shall name me the senior Harvey. And Monsieur Delon shall be the piccolo senior Ned. And when Madame Don Laurentia shall say, who be there? Monsieur Vandal say, say, oh, my self lady, here be your love, Master Hyam. Is this, is no this the privacy me, Master Vandal? Slide up down from any van ik sal come up to the camera can van my new vineken slide up down from any van ik sal come. Ha, 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 Master Vandal. I trow you will be merry soon at night when you shall do indeed what now you hope of. I shall you sing, Father. I shall teach your daughter such a thing, make her laugh too. Well, my sons, all, oh, for so I count you shall. What we have here devised, provide me for. But above all, do not, I pray, forget to come but one by one, as they did wish. Mar, for tens, father, ik fight night they way they to your house, for tens, master Frisco, your mannequin come to call me, call de me, and bring me to your house. Yes, marry, shall he. See that you be ready. And at the hour of eleven, soon at night, hire you to Bucklesbury to his chamber, and so direct him straight unto my house. My son Alvaro and Monsieur de Leon, I know do know the way exceeding well. Well, will to the rose embarking for an hour, and Sirrah Frisco, see you prove no blab. And exuant Pissarro, Alvaro, De Leon and Vandal, leaving Frisco behind. But we'll come to Frisco's point on this uh, this uh, disguise wooing plot um, that's that's coming up here. Um, yes, because I'm sure um, Alvaro, De Leon and Vandal, they're going to be able to just absolutely master pretending to be the English suitors. I'm sure I'm sure their, their practicing there was so masterful. I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> the, 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 fine. <laughs> yeah um this is a terrible plan um <laughs> but therefore probably quite amusing when it uh, uh comes to fruition lois then lynn yeah um it looks as if what uh, pissarro has in mind though is that uh, uh these guys will actually compromise his daughters to the point where they'll have to be married to them i mean i don't know if he yeah. actually expects sex but uh if not, something pretty close to it. Mm. Yeah, uh, then. Yeah, that. I yeah, that's that's true. It, but yeah, it, that's that's kind of gross. Again, um, I I will admit though, I had a moment of panic when Frisco comes running in and says, "Oh, I'm on an errand for your daughters. Their boyfriends are going to come and see them." I'm like Frisco, what are you doing? What what what? what? <laughs> and then I realized, okay, that Anthony and the girls are too smart. To let that happen that's that but i but you know it manipulated me successfully i'm like oh shit. <laughs> mm. uh rachel um, may i 
Oh, oh sorry, look, uh, Julia then, Rachel. Oh, I was going to say, uh, yeah, they're, even if they don't talk, the, the girls have made a point of the fact that, that a couple of them smell distinctly. <laughs> um, but also, one reason that Frisco's language is so poor, his, his, his foreign languages are so poor, might be to counterpoint theirs and therefore on stage make them sound good. I mean, the actors playing the foreign characters. Mm. There's an awful lot of work that's got to be there made uh. to, to make all that sound fluid and natural and, and also clear. I mean, you know, it, uh. it's, it's a cold read. It's a, it's a cool... Oh, no, no, no. I just mean that by comparison, since mm. these are so bad, it helps the audience accept that they're normal, that they're real. Mm. I, it's just a thought. Uh, Rachel? No, I'm... Uh, I'm with what Francis said because there is the way the guy speaks in Dutch is real and the the there's parts where the parts where yesterday they were jumbling the languages together I understand today what that is is when you know the they're speaking each other's languages they're directing it towards each other and they're trying to say it in there in each other's native languages like when um the uh, i think the french guy uses italian sometimes or they if he, he seems like he's going in and he's dipping into dutch for a moment i think it's it's giving us little cues as to how who the actor would be speaking to at that moment and that he'd be aiming that towards his other suitors um because the french make sense and the dutch even if the spelling isn't i guess what would be modern there's still something you can make out of it that from my high school German, I'm I'm picking things up from it. But like, um, uh, what was I gonna? I I don't know what what the rest I was gonna say. Oh, this scene is so so great because even though I don't like Harvey, the plan seems to be to like sexually assault women in this scene, and so it makes it easier for the audience to be on the side of the English men because there's at least consent there, even if they're in loads of debt and they're not, um, they're not all together. If you, you know what I mean to like sway the audience in this comedy. Uh, Lois. I was just noticing that at the beginning of that, of the bit we were reading, Laurentius says that her, her lover, uh, her foreign lover is belching into mine ears, those rustic phrases and those Dutch French terms. Uh, which is odd, really. I mean, that sort of fits with what Rachel's been saying about the way they're mixing up languages. I don't know if it's just that these guys are so used to dealing in an international market that uh, they, they speak a bit of everything. I mean, there is something called lingua franca, but I think that was spoken along the Mediterranean coast and was a kind of mixture of French, Spanish and Italian rather than uh, any of the northern languages. Uh, yeah, because you know we have this this sort of extended wooing, attempted wooing, uh, which they uh, the ladies quite firmly put them in their place and sort of uh, saunter off. Uh, if need you marry with an English lash, we're in English, or she'll call you an ass. Um, <laughs> that feels like an exit line there, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think they exit one by one, um, almost, rather than all to, all as a group at the end. But I'm not sure on that point. <laughs> Uh, other thoughts? Uh, it's, it's a long scene. There's lots of business. People are popping in and out. Uh, this is essentially a new unit of action, even though uh, sequentially things have uh, continued. Uh, in the same space, um, Pissarro, Alvaro, uh, De Leon and Vandal have exited. Frisco has been left behind to talk to the audience. Oh, monstrous. Who would think my master had so much wit in his old rotten budget? And yet, if faith, he is not much troubled with it neither. Why, what wise man in a kingdom would send me for the Dutchman? Does he think I'll not cousin him? Oh, fine, I'll have the bravest sport. Oh, brave, I'll have the gallantest sport. Oh, come now, if I can hold behind while I may laugh a while, I, I care not. <laughs> Enter Anthony. Why, how now, Fisco? My laugh is so heartily. <laughs> laugh, Master Mouse, laugh. <laughs> oh, laugh, why should I laugh? Or oh, why art thou so merry? <laughs> oh, Master Mouse, Master Mouse, it would make any mouse, rat, cat, or dog laugh to think what sport we shall have at our house soon at night. 
I'll tell you all. My young mistress sent me after Master Hyam and his friends to pray them come to our house after my old master was abed. Now I went and I went and I run and I went and whom should I meet but my master Pizarro and the strangers. So my master very worshipfully, I must needs say, examined me whither I went. Now I durst not tell him an untruth for fear of lying, but told him plainly and honestly mine errand. Now, who would think my master had such a monstrous plaguey wit? He was as glad as could be, out of all scotch and not glad, out of all count glad. And so, Sarah, he bid the three uplandish men come in their steads and woo my young mistresses. Now, <laughs> it made me laugh to think how they would be cousined that I could not follow my master, uh, but I'll follow him. I, I know he's gone to the tavern in his merry humor. Now, if you will keep this as secret as I have done hitherto, we shall have the bravest sport soon as can be. Um, I must be gone. Say nothing. And exit Frisco. Well, it is so. And we will have good sport or it shall go out. This must the wenches know or all is mild. Enter the three sisters. Ah, hark you, Miss Ma, Miss Laurentia, Miss Matt. Uh, I have such news, my girls, which make you smile. What be they, master? How I love to hear it. A woman writes, still longing, and with child, for everything they hear or light upon. Well, if you be mad wenches, hear it now. Now may your knaveries give the deadliest blow to night walkers, eavesdroppers, or outlandish love that air was stricken. Anthony Lamus, move but the matter. Tell us but the jest. And if you find us slack to execute, never give credence nor believe us more. Then no, the strangers, your outlandish loves appointed by your father, come this night instead of Arvi, Agam, and young Ned under their shadows to get your bed. For Frisco simply told him why he went. I did not instruct, you can conceive. You are not stocks nor stones, but have some store of wit and knavery too. Anthony, thanks. It is too small a gun for this news. You must be English. <laughs> well, sir, senior souse, I'll teach you tricks for coming to our house. Are you so crafty? Oh, that night were come. I'm, that I might hear my Dutchman, how he'd swear in his own mother tongue that he loves me. Well, if I quit him not, I hear pray God I may let it lead apes in hell and die a maid, and that were worse it to me than a hanging. Well said, old honest adults. Here's a heap of merry lasses. Well, for myself, I'll I meet your lovers. Bid them mask with us at night and in some corner stay near our house where they may make some play upon your rivals and when they are gone, come to your windows. Do so, good master. Please be gone. For this our sport, somebody soon will mourn. And exuant the three sisters, Antony remains as enter Pissarro. How favourable heaven and earth is seen to grace the mirthful complot that is laid. Night's candles burn obscure and the pale moon favouring our drift lies buried in a cloud. I can but smile to see the simple girls hoping to have their sweethearts here tonight tickled with extreme joy, laugh in my face. But when they find the strangers in their steads, they'll change their note and sing another song. Where be these girls here? What? To bed, to bed. Maudlin, make fast the doors, rake up the fire. Enter the three sisters. God's me, tis nine o'clock. Hark, O oh bell rings. Oh, there's a knock. Some look down below and see who knocks. And hark you girls, settle your hearts at rest. And for resolve you that tomorrow morn you must be wed to such as I prefer. I mean Alvaro and his other friends. Let me no more be troubled with your nays. You shall do what I'll have and so resolve. Uh, enter more. 
Welcome, Master Moore. Welcome. What wind, a god's name, drives you forth so late? Uh, Faith, sir, I have come to trouble you. My wife this present night is brought to bed. To bed? And what hath God sent you? A, golly, a jolly girl, sir. And God bless her. But what's your will, sir? Faith, sir, my house being full of friends, such as I thank them, came to see my wife. I would request you that for this one night, my daughter Susan might be lodged here. Lodge in my house? Welcome with all my heart. Matt, hark you, she shall lie with you. Trust me, she could not come in a fitter time. For hear you, sir, tomorrow mo in the morning, all my three daughters must be married. Good Master Moore, let's have your company. What say you, sir? Enter a servant. Welcome, honest friend. How now, sir? What's the news with you? Moosh, hear you. Stir betimes tomorrow, for then I mean your scholars shall be wed. What news, what news, man, that you look so sad? He brings me word my wife is new fallen sick, and my daughter cannot come tonight, or if she does, it will be very late. Believe me. I am then more sorry for sorry for it. But for your daughter, come she soon or late, some of us will be up to let her in. For here be three mean not to sleep tonight. Well, you must be gone. Commend me to your wife. Take heed to how you go down. The stairs are bad. Bring here a light. As well, I thank you, sir. And exit more. Good night, Master Moore. Farewell, honest friend. Come, come, to bed, to bed, tis nine and past. Do not stand prating here to make me fetch you, but get you to your chambers. Exit Pissarro. Lady, here's short work. Hark you, girls, will you tomorrow marry with the strangers? If faith, sir, no. I'll first leap out a window before Marina marry with a stranger. Yes, but your father swears you shall have one. Yes, but his daughters swear they shall have none. These horse and cannibals, these Philistines, these tango mongos shall not rule o'er me. I'll have my will and med, or I'll have none. How will you get him? Huh? How will you get him? I know no other way except it be this, that when your father's in his soundest sleep, you open the door and run away with him. So we, so will. we will, rather than miss him. Ah, Tis well resolved to faith, and like yourselves, but hear you, to your chambers presently, least that your father do describe your drift. And exit with the sisters. Mistress Susan should come, but she... We have Has Dan frozen? We have a frozen Dan. Yeah, he, um, he warned us this might happen. It, it, it warned us of uh, possibility of... Uh, of uh, oh, there, there was movement. There was movement. Is Dan back in the room? Uh... Yes, uh, Mistress Sus Susan, could you go from the top of the speech again, if you're actually here? Yes, uh, tis well of fate. Uh, stable? Is this all right? Yes, I think so. From Mistress okay. Susan should come. Okay. Mistress Susan should come, but she cannot. Nor perhaps should not. But perhaps she shall. Why not a man conceit a pretty jest and make as mad a riddle as this is? If all things fadge now, if faith, oh, no. that shall have her do. As all things should do, we shall be sped. Uh, we shall be Matt sped. Shall have a do. Matt shall yeah, have it, a do. it was there. It was there. <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, we'll 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 take it as red now. Um, so yes, um, plots counterplots. Um, uh, we've got uh, yes, Anthony uh, plotting with the uh, the 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 daughters, and yeah, generally um, uh, undermining the the planned uh, thing here. We have this whole. Additional complication of the daughter Susan might be lodged. Uh, we'll see what comes of that. Um, I'm not saying that it might be quite important. Uh, Lois. Yeah, presumably it has to be, but it, it does seem very odd if uh, if uh, Pizarro's plot is to have the, the three suitors uh, come and possibly get into bed with his daughters. I don't know quite what he's got in mind here. Why does he want Susan in bed with one of them? I mean, it seems to confuse the whole thing. Well, I think there are two reasons. One, in his mind, you know, uh, someone there to be uh, help with the wedding that will probably have to happen first thing in the morning. And the other reason, plot, play, needs <laughs> yes. it. 
to happen well, he, couldn't come up with something better. <laughs> and it's, I mean, given the circumstances, it's hard to say no when somebody, you know, asks for a real, you know, request like that. I mean, you could lodge her somewhere else in the house, but, you know, mm. you didn't really have, like, you know, extra rooms. Mm. I don't know. I'm just thinking of it from the historical time period, like if it would be a logical thing to do, but... Mm. Yeah, um, I, 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 I think I say within the character's mind, it's just connecting it with the wedding that we're having tomorrow. We'll need people to assist. Mm. That's that's mm. the logic, mm. even if it's wafer thin. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it has to be said that there's some um, uh, Marina's quite clear. She's definitely not going to marry any of the uh, <laughs> the strangers. Uh, first leap out at, at, at window. So um, I think quite clear. Definitely not keen on that. Um, and uh, Anthony uh, continuing uh, being being the go-between. Uh, Elizabeth? I was wondering whether Pissar actually likes his daughters, you know? Because <laughs> I was there thinking, because he doesn't, you know, I was, all these kind of narratives we see of, like, fatherly affection and, and father, fatherly doting, it's not till until, like, maybe political reasons or financial reasons come into play that the fathers start to become very, very difficult with their daughters and who they're going to marry. But Bissaro seems to just be doing this on a whim. Yeah, it just seems to be... Um, um, well, it's not so much a whim. I, th I think there's, there's, there's clear financial imperatives on his mind. I think that's the logic. He thinks they're good... good, good uh, the, you know, he will gain additional money from them. Uh, rather than lose out if if the Englishmen have it, because the Englishmen owe you know owe him money basically, uh, or potentially owe him money. So um, they're they're not going to bring anything into the family. They're, they're, uh, they're, it's 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 not great for them. It's not a great connection. Um, so yeah, I don't think he's thinking about their well-being and the mental health at all. Uh, Helen, then Sarah. Yeah, I, I mean, I got the impression he was setting up a, a, a an international consortium. <laughs> um, and the marriage was uh, the cement that would hold it together, the, the three marriages. But he's, presumably he's well enough connected in Portugal himself, but he's now going to be well connected in France, Italy and the Low Countries. So there really isn't anywhere else to trade. Mm. Uh, Sarah, and then Elizabeth again. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite intrigued by the character of Anthony. Um, I I have to confess, I thought this was it was going to turn out that he was in love with one of the sisters, uh, but he doesn't appear to be. Um, and I'm just interested as to what his motivations are, really, um, other than the fact that he was, you know, sacked. Um, but yeah. It's just it's, he's he's got himself into this. I, I mean, obviously, you know, comic for the from from the perspective of you know, oiling the the wheels of the plot, uh, position. But like as a character, I'm just like, hmm, interesting. What, why, why is he there? What's he doing? Like mm. I don't really know. Uh, which is quite good probably because you could take him off in all sorts of different directions. But I wonder if he is just going to be like, oh, we need a, a character to do this, so let's make it him. Or whether he is going to turn out to have some sort of reasons. Yes, at, at the moment the doyleist uh, 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 angle is 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 landing heavier uh, uh, in my mind than uh, the Watsonian. Uh, Lois than Helen. Yeah, well, Lynn's already talked about new comedy, and he seems to me to be playing the role of the clever servant. Uh, mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, the poor scholar uh, is pretty much in the same position. I mean, he's <clears> not he's not got any real authority and he's at the mercy of whoever employs him and uh you know he he might as well be uh the clever slave in, in, in latin comedy uh and dan's put in the chat uh, the, the 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 possibly unpopular notion maybe he's just nice um <laughs> <laughs> sorry elizabeth i skipped uh skipped past you uh oh i was just saying to what helen was saying about how like pissarro setting up this very mini exchange in his household Mm. And like so that he can trade across the across the across the nations in his from his own home. But I like the suitors, the English suitors. I think that they're quite charming. 
Um, except for maybe perhaps Walgrave, who's a little bit um, cantankerous for his age. Um, I quite like the English suitors, yeah. Uh, Helen? Uh, Anthony is is going to marry Susan. Ah. <laughs> I mean, I'm 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 determined. If this is going to, if everybody is going to end up paired off, then Susan is obviously Anthony's. Ah. Well, um, there there might be a fly in that ointment, but uh, we'll we'll burn that bridge when we get to it, a Rachel, move. and then we'll move on. <laughs> uh, who is Susan? Did she come up before, and I've just nope. forgotten her? Ra- random random person. She's Moore's <laughs> daughter. Mm. We've met more earlier, vaguely. A neighbour. Yeah. Right. Let's see. Let's see if, uh, what what happens when we meet Susan and we have a a, 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 a rollicking, uh, exciting <laughs> scenes with her coming up. Uh, Act three, scene one. Um, enter Vandal and Frisco. Where be you, Master Frisco? Uh, here, sir. Uh, here, sir. Oh, now, if I could cousin him, uh, uh, take heed, sir. Uh, here's a post. It be so grotterly hot that that ik spit. Oh, when shall we we come, dear? Oh, uh, be you so hot, sir? Uh, let me carry your cloak. I assure you, it will ease you much. Dear here, dear, tis so dark I can not see. Aye, so, so, and uh, now you may travel in your hose and doublet. Now, look, I, as like the Dutchman, as if I were spit out of his mouth. I'll straight home and speak groot and broad and toot and uh, gibberish, and in the dark I'll have a fling at the wenches. Well, I say no more. Uh, farewell, Master Vandal. I must go seek my fortune. And having nicked uh, Vandal's cloak, Frisco exits. Mr. Frisco, Mr. Frisco, what shall you no speak? I make you the fool. Why, Mr. Frisco, oh, the skellum, it be, he be, ga met the cloak. Miss Halle say he's master. Ha, Mr. Frisco. Where said ye, Mr. Frisco? And exit Vandal. Uh, a short little scene, primarily to set up that it's dark. <laughs> and I think Vandal's drunk as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, Frisco is is playing cosplay himself. Just as if this situation isn't complicated mm-hmm. enough, we've got lots of people cosplaying as other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's dark. It's mm-hmm. so dark... You cannot see, so uh, I'm sure that will be uh, that's important data that we should all just just hold on to as we go forward to Act Three, Scene Two. I'm not lingering here. Uh, enter Harvey, Ham, and Walgrave. Does the case sell well, Signor Bottlenose? It may be we shall overreach your drift. This is the time the wenches sent us word our bombast Dutchman and his mates will come. Well, neat Italian, you must don my shape. Play your part well, or I may, haps, pay you. What, speechless, Ned? Faith, whereon musest thou? Tis on your French corrival for my life. He comes at Vostre and so forth, till he hath foisted in a brat or two. How then, how now? How then, how then? Hey, uh, I'll geld him first, ere uh, that infestious losel revel there. Well, Matt, I think thou knowest what Ned can do. Shouldst thou change Ned for Noddy? Me for him? Thou didst not know thy loss, if faith thou didst not. Come, leave this idle chat, and let provide which of us shall be scarecrow to these fools, and set, set them out the way. Why, that will I. Then put a sword into a madman's hand. Thou art so hasty that, but cross thy humour, and thou'lt be ready cross them o'er the pates. Therefore, for this time, I'll supply the room. And so we shall be sure of chat enough. You'll hold them with your flouts and gulls so long that all the night will be scarcely be enough to put in practice what we have devised. Come, come, I'll be the man shall do the deed. 
Well, I am content to save your longing. But soft, where are we? Ha! Here's the house. Come, let us take our stands. Frank, stand you there, and Ned and I will cross to the other side. Do so. Hush, I hear other passing. Enter Enter. Alvaro. Oh, the favorable aspect of the heaven. It is so obscure, so dark, so black, that no mortal creature can know me. I pray a deal. I shall have the right bench. I see. I be right. Here be the house of Signor Pedro. I shall have the Madonna Marina. And Devor, I shall knock to the door. He knocks. Well, a pox, are you mad or drunk? What do you mean to break my glasses? What be the glasses? What drunk? What mad? What glasses, sir? Why, my glasses. And if you be so crank, I'll call the constable. You will not enter into a man's house, I hope, in spite of him. Nor durst you be so bold as to stand there, if once the master of the house did know it. Is this your house? Is, be you the signor of this casa? Signor me, no signors, no casa me, no casas. But get you hence, or you are like to taste of this bastinado. Do, do, good Ferdinand, pummel the loggerhead. Is this near the house of Mr. Pizarro? Yes, marry when, can you tell? How do you? I thank you heartily, my finger in your mouth. What be that? Uh, marry, that you are an ass and a loggerhead to seek Master Pizarro's house here. Pretty Gracia, what be this flash? What do you call this street? Oh, sir, why Leadenhall? Can you not see the four spouts as you came along? Certainly, Leadenhall. I hit my head by the way. There may be diverse sprouts. A pretty Gracia, wish me the way to crush friars. How? To crush in friars? Mary, you must go along till you come to the pump and then turn on your right hand. Signor, a deal. <laughs> Exit Alvaro. Farewell, and be hanged, Signor. Now for your fellow, if the ass would come. Enter suitor number two. Enter De Leon. By my throat, me do so much. Think of it. A uh, gentlewoman, the fine wench that me think they shower ten day and ish day ten years till I come to her. Ah, uh, here this uh, the wee of uh, Saint Father the Salale and knock. He knocks. Oh, what? What a bot ails you? Are you mad? Will you run over me and break my glasses? Glasses? What? What glasses? I pray is Monsieur Pizarro to me the maison. There's thy substance. Hey, by the mass, the substance is here. The shadows, the mass. What, Master Pizarro? Loggerhead, here's none of your Pizarros. Uh, yes, but this is the voice of uh, Mr. Pizarro. Well, not this Monsieur Motley take its answer. I'm going to knock the ass about the pate. Nay, by your leave, sir, but I'll hold your worship. This stir we should have had, had you stood there. Why, would it not vex one to hear the ass? Standing prating here of Dit and Dan and Den and Dog. One of thy metal, Ned, would surely do it. But peace and hark to the rest. You know the fine gentlewoman, Maitres uh, Matt, uh, dwell in this splash? Uh, no, sir. Here dwells none of your fine gentlewomen. Twere a good deal, Sarah, to see who you are. You come hither to steal my glasses and then counterfeit you are going to, to your queens. I be deceived this dark night. Here be no wench. I be no in the right place. I pray, monsieur, what be the name of this street and uh, which be the way to crush friars? Mary, this is Fenshaw Street, and the best way to crush friars is to follow your nose. Vanshaw Street? How, how, how shall we come to Vanshaw Street? Well, monsieur, we must have led to crush friars. And exit to Leon. Farewell, forty pence. Go seek you, Signor. I hope you'll find yourselves two dolts anon. Hush, Ferdinand. I hear the last come stamping hither. Um, we're going to pause there before the next suitor comes in. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, this, uh, you know, 
confusing tourists um, uh, by, by uh, giving them the wrong directions. This whole thing about glasses is 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 really interesting. You know, in the, you, you, the, the, it, and they use exactly the same hustle each time. There's no variation. Um, I, there's, there's that sort of bit, you know, Harkness. There's thy substance. I assume that's because they're, they're they're effectively wearing the same clothes at that point. And just look, look, we look the same. Um, look, here's your double. Um, uh, otherwise, it's a slightly tricky line to sort of uh, hard, uh, 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 sort out. But um, yeah, they're uh, they're all um, they're playing the same dodge each time. So um, without that many variations, uh, just a few uh, variations there. Um, uh, any thoughts on on the room on on the action so far, Lois? I guess this is a sort of night scene, like you know the. Uh, we had it in the Two Angry Women of Abingdon, and I think it's in the Merry Devil of Edmonton, you know, one of these things where everybody's in the dark and weird things are happening. Presumably that'll go on getting more and more complicated. Yes, everyone's sort of wandering around going, oh, I can't see, it's so dark. Oh, um, And that can be exaggerated to great effect, especially if, if there's lots of people on stage that people aren't seeing as well. So, that, you know, the the, the various... Uh, mm. The two suitors who aren't chatting to uh, the, the 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 poor Mark um, are are always uh, uh, upstage or on the other side of where they're looking. I mean, there's the, a lot of it's behind you business is potential here. Uh, any other thoughts, uh, Sarah? Then Elizabeth. Yes, I mean, um, you ha you have to kind of. Uh just visualize this don't you because i have to say on the page i i'm finding this a bit i don't know it's, I, it's yeah. like it's, it's like the 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 the, the let's that's let's laugh at foreigners thing has just gone on so long now mm. i'm like oh man really how, how much longer are we gonna have to do this um it's a bit it's a bit painful but I can imagine that actually when the stage, and I'm just looking at Alex Romanoff there, who's, who's, you know, beautifully lit it, against a black background. And I'm thinking, yeah, actually, if this was like, if there were lots of people on stage and they kept coming in and out of, into the spotlight, and I, I'm sure it would be really good, but I'm, 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 I'm struggling with it, I think, on, on the page. Um, I, I but, don't, I, and it's the thing that I don't think the driver here is the uh, comedy uh, foreigner thing. I mean, they're still speaking in in, in an accent, um, which you know, again with rehearsal and, and playing around. Um, I, I don't think there are that many jokes embedded in that. I think it's just the situation is, you're, oh, you're at the wrong house, mate. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah. oh, you trod on my glasses. You know, uh, and, and that's the driver. But it is true that both scenes with both victims pretty much the same there isn't that much variation between the two and that mm. is slightly disappointing i was hoping for some more development the mm. second time around it's like but then it's only the second time around maybe maybe if you've done it right you can get away with it twice if you do it the same the third time they're in trouble um uh helen uh yeah the the one of the differences is in the location one of them says Le he's in Leadenhall Street, the other one in Fenchurch Street. I mean, I I don't have the mental map of Lon uh, early modern London that someone like, uh, say, at a random name, Tracy might have. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, it, it, I, I feel suddenly, you know, I need a map because he's <laughs> obviously giving them very bad, giving very bad directions. Yeah. But they are different directions. Oh, absolutely, because they want to send them in different directions. They, yeah. they don't want them meeting each other. And, so and there going. is that difference. Yeah, and I, I think you're absolutely right about that sort of mental map that you need. I mean, it's not a large area of London that they're, they're, they're navigating here. It's all quite tight. We've had the sound of Bow Bells earlier, you know, and, and mm -hmm. so there's all these various landmarks and also sound marks, as it were, uh, out there. Uh, uh, Julie, I think, is waving. <laughs> yes. Um, do you think the, oh, you broke my glasses line is an indication that they've actually physically bumped into them? Mm. Because then they might be stealing their cloak or some other piece of their outfit to masquerade as them as well. And that might give you something to move forward with. Mm. I mean, at least in staging. Because when you bump into somebody is when you drop your glasses. Oh. Yeah. 
I, I think there no. could be there could be some some de uh, no. physical action there. Lynn is disagreeing. Lynn. No, no. Uh, uh, as far as I know, glass uh, spectacles were never called glasses in this period. They're spectacles. He's talking about knocking his barware off the shelves because they're knocking on the the door so hard. That's what's breaking is drinking glasses, not not not. Oh. Like you're, others... knocking, you're knocking my my serveware off my shelves because you're pounding on the door so hard. So, well, the other <laughs> well, the other thought I had was that they were pounding so hard that the glass and the windows might be shaking. I wasn't I, even I aware that you'd have glassware necessarily yeah. anywhere yeah. that it could fall down. I think that's possible too. Yeah. That like that you're going to break the windows and uh, that you would refer to your your windows as the glasses because of course they were in the multi panes yeah yeah so yeah but i'm still, almost positive it's not spectacles but the 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 physical business may still be there i i, I, I see that there the, the, there's the potential of them sort of running straight into them and uh, and turning them around as well there's that that possibility in the dark and they get just get very lost uh elizabeth yeah, um, sp speaking to what Sarah was saying earlier about the, the the comedy business in this scene being a little bit painful to watch, um, there was a lot of there was a lot of discussion earlier about come one at a time. Now I don't know how how they you know would have organised this amongst themselves to make sure that they don't arrive more than once at at, at a time. Um, Especially because, you know, it's not like, okay, you come at 6.15, you come at 6.30, you come at 6.45. <laughs> and it was a case of, it was just a case of, if I thought that if any, if any of the, the suitors arrived together, it would just ruin, it would, it would ruin the, the narrative completely. But the fact that they came one at a time was kind of a lost opportunity for there to be different comedy business each time. And I just thought that it was interesting how much of a of a to do was made about them coming once at a time, and now that they have, not much has been made of that. It's very much like a nineteen eighties fight scene, isn't it? They, they, yeah. they don't all pile yeah. on; they, 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 they all very politely <laughs> queue. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, Rachel, and then we'll move on. Dan put in the chat that it's the repetition, like the humor is supposed to rise perhaps out of the repetition. And that was kind of the feeling that I was getting too. But um, uh, the, the way that, that uh, what was the one with onion and the dog garlic, that it was that joke that just kept happening again, that we're on, they, were, they weren't necessarily funny at first, but the longer they went on, they were funny. And um, I, I feel like they're trying to go for the same thing perhaps here, but it's just not a joke that's necessarily landed where. It it's, if happened. it were exactly the same and it went with physical business as well, then uh, then actually I'd be slightly less down on this sequence. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the fact that it's almost the same, but it's not quite. And that makes it slight. And it's also re each sequence is relatively long if they dump 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 diddly diddly dump boom um then then repeating it feels i mean in, in practice it may be fine i'm we may just i yeah, i just may have you know over overstating my issue um uh, but um yeah anyway uh we should move on uh, uh elizabeth briefly and then we'll move on yeah rob you were just saying about how it kind of is landing a bit flat i think the build-up for it has been quite ex uh, not extreme but there's been a lot of build-up towards these scenes so that the the expectation is that the payoff will be quite hilarious and you know be quite you know you know i thought um the author would put their best foot forward but it's kind of fallen a bit flat for that build up we had that really really long scene followed by the tiny scene and then and then we had now we have this nighttime shenanigans and we're not really seeing maybe the payoff that we we want we would expect from such a long amount of build-up well it's not over yet so let's yeah. uh, maybe maybe they will uh will it will be paid off because of course stopping and starting we're killing the flow uh mm. i'm killing the flow it's me doing that <laughs> uh, anyway we've had suitor number one we've had suitor number two it's time for suitor number three but no it's frisco enter frisco <laughs> <sighs> 
Ah, Sarah, I have left my fat Dutchman and run myself almost out of breath, too. Now to my young mistresses go I. Somebody cast an old shoe after me? But soft, how shall I do to counterfeit the Dutchman? Because I speak English so like a natural. Uh, Tash, take you no thought for that. Let me alone for a squintum, squantum. Uh, soft, uh, here's my master's house. Who's there? Who's there? Why, sir? Oh, here is, uh, nay, no, that's too good English. <clears throat> Why, here be the Groot Dutchman. Then there's not only a grout head, but an ass also. Oh, what be you? You be an English ox to call a gentle moan ass. Hark, Ned, yonder's good greeting. Uh, but you, uh, and you be Master Mouse that dwell here, tell your matressa Laurentia that her sweetheart, Master Vandal, would speak with her. Master Mendal, get you gone, lest you get a broken pate and some more all. Here's no entrance for Mistress Laurentia's sweetheart. Ah, God sacrament, what is the luck now? Shall not I come to my friend, Master Pizar Hus? Yes, and to Master Pizarro's shoes, too, if he or they were here. Why, my groat friend, Master Pizarro, doth dwell here. Sirrah, you lie. Here dwells nobody but I, that have dwelt here this one and forty years, and sold glasses. Oh, one and fifty at the least. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, do you give the gentleman the lie? I, sir, and will give you a lick of my cudgel if ye stay long and trouble the whole street with your bawling. Hence, dolt, and go seek Master Pizarro's house. Go seek Master Pizarro's house? Where shall I go seek it? Why, you shall go seek it where it is. Why, well, that is here in Crutch Friars. <laughs> How loggerhead is crotchet fires here? I thought you were some such drunken ass that you come to seek crotchet fires in Tower Street. But get you along on your left hand and be hanged. You have kept me out of my bed with your bangling a good while longer than I would have been. Ha ha, how is this? Uh, is not this crutched fryers? Tell me. Oh, hold a crown. They gave me so much wine at the tavern that I'm drunk and no, not aren't. My Dutchman's out his compass and his card. He's reckoning what wind hath drove him hither. I'll swear he thinks never to see Pizarro's. Nay, hey, tis so, I'm sure drunk. So, let me see, what was I about? Oh, oh, now I have it. I must go to my master's house and counterfeit the Dutchman and get my young mistress. Well, and I must turn on my left hand for I've got forgot the way quite and clean. <clears throat> A uh, far day well, good friend. I am a simple Dutchman, I. Exit Frisco. Fair weather after you. And now, my lads, have I not played my part as I should do? Twas well, twas well. But now let's cast about to set these woodcocks farther from the house and afterwards return mm. unto our girls. Content, content. Come, come. Make haste. And they exit. Uh, we're going to go straight into the next scene and see how that plays out. Uh, act three, scene three. Enter Alvero. I go and turn, and then I come to dish splash. I can tell no why. And so I do no tell what. Turn, put a pump it there. Enter De Leon. Me, Ale, and Ale, and can I come to cross fires? And enter Frisco. Oh, miserable black pudding. If I can tell which is the way to my master's house, I am a red herring and no honest gentleman. Hola, to there. Who be there? Who are they? How's this? Oh, for my life, here are the strangers. Oh, that I had the Dutchman's hose that I might creep into the pockets. Well, they'll three fall upon me and beat me. Who goes there, Ander? Uh, me. 
oh, brave, that is nobody but Master Alvaro and the Frenchman going to our house on my life. Well, I'll have some sport with them if the watch hinder me not. Who goes there? Who parle de? In, in, in what place, in what street be you? Why, sir, I can tell where I am. I am in Tower Street. Where a devil be you? I be here in Leadenhall. <laughs> in Leadenhall? I trow I shall meet with you anon. In Leadenhall? Oh, what a simple ass is this Frenchman. Some more of this. Uh, where are you, sir? Why, I be here in Vance Street. This is excellent of faith, as fit as a fiddle. I in Tower Street, you in Leadenhall, in the third in Fenchurch Street, and yet all three hear one another, and all three speak together. Either we must be all three in Leadenhall, or all three in Tower Street, or all three in Fenchurch Street, or all three fools. Monsieur Gentleman, can you well teach the way to crush flowers? How to crutch friars? Aye, aye, sir, passing well, if you will follow me. I meet that missile, Monsieur de Gentilhomme, and give you thanks. And Monsieur Alvaro, I shall lead you such a jaunt that you shall scare me thanks for. Uh, come, sir, as for me, now for a dirty puddle a pissing conduit, or a great post that might turn these two from asses into oxen by knocking their horns to their foreheads. Where be you now, senor? <laughs> Aim where you will, senor, for I know not. Oh, soft I smell. Oh, pure nose. Uh, what do you smell? I have the scent of London stone as full in my nose as Abchurch Lane of Mother Wall's pasties. Sirs, feel about. I smell London stone. What be this? Uh, soft, let me see. Uh, feel, I should say, for I cannot see. <laughs> oh, oh, lads, pray for my life, for we are almost at Crutch Friars. That's good, but what be this post? Uh, this post, why, tis the Maypole on Ivy Bridge going to Westminster. Oh, Westminster, how come we to Westminster? Why, on your legs, fools, how should you go? Oh, soft, here's another. Oh, now I know indeed where I am. We are now at the farthest end of Shoreditch, for this is the Maypole. Shoreditch? Oh, dear, there be some naughty thing, some, some spirit to lead us. Ah, you say true, sir, for I am afeard your French spirit is up so far already that you brought me this way because you would find a charm for it at the blue boar in the spittle. Ah, but soft, who comes here? Enter a bellman. Maids in your smocks, look well to your locks, your fire and light, and God give you... Good night. Uh, Monsieur Gentilhomme, uh, I pray parlez one, two, three, four words for us to this, uh, uh, our man. Ah, uh, yes, Mary, shall I? Um, I pray, honest fellow, in what street be we? Oh, Frisco? With a frisk you at this time of night? What, Monsieur Frisco? Signor Frisco? <laughs> the same, <laughs> the same. Hark ye, honesty. Methinks you might do well to have an M under your girdle, considering how Signor Pissarro and this other monsieur do hold of me. Oh, sir, I cry you mercy. Pardon this fault, and I'll do as much for you the next time. Well, passing over a superfluical talk, I pray, what street is this? Uh, for it is so dark, I know not where I am. Why? Art thou drunk? Dost thou not know Fenchurch Street? <laughs> Aye, sir, a good fellow may sometimes be overseen among friends. Uh, I was drinking with my master and these gentlemen, and therefore no marvel, though I be none of the wisest at this present. Uh, but I pray thee, good man Butterick, bring me to my master's house. Why, I will, I will. Psh, that you are so strange nowadays. But it is an old said saw. Honours change manners. 
Uh, good man, Butterick, will you walk afore? Come, honest friends, will you go to our house? Uh, oui, Monsieur Frisco. Si, Signor Frisco. And they exit. Again, I feel that there's a lot of physical business that we're missing here. That they're basically walking in circles over here, over there, through through um, some uh, unfortunate matter on uh, 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 available. Um, I mean, this whole thing about smelling, uh, you know, wonderful scents and just going. I'm suggesting that that these these companions are not feeling that. <laughs> <laughs> That it's much worse. Uh, Alan? Well, text thing, there was a mention of wearing an M under the girdle. I'm mm. sure we've had that before, and I can't remember what it meant. Yeah, we have had it before, because I remember commenting on it there, too. And uh, it's something that happens to turn up in Eastward Ho, which is why I know it. It's a it, it's a kind of colloquial way of saying, you, could, you really should call me master, such and such. Uh, mm. We we yeah uh, we we have um, yeah because presumably he's he's wearing all this this uh, he's wearing this fine cloak and he's sort of going look I'm, I've gone up in the world look look at me um, especially as the bellman has just put the uh, you know I've just written in the uh, the moment if the bellman goes ho Frisco I've just written in the margin bugger um, <laughs> just going, you know it's like he's going ah oh, uh, he's doing all his uh, his his yeah. usual uh, uh, steak and the bellman just goes, oh hi up Fr Frisco <laughs> what are you doing around here. Uh, <laughs> frisking uh with a frisky at this time of night boom boom um uh, local cockney wit uh uh, uh any other thoughts about this little sequence to say it feels um you know it's uh, this this little roundabout that's following on from the last scene. So we've got these three lost people. Even the local person doesn't get it. I think again, Helen's point about we really need a map would really help with a lot of this because mm -hmm. there's a lot of landmarks, you know, relatively minor landmarks as well that, that, that are being brought up here. That it's uh, it's tricky to uh, mm -hmm. um, to navigate uh, or to really appreciate it because you know I I hear Fenchurch uh, uh, Street and I mostly think of Monopoly. Um, mm. rather than... <laughs> yeah, well, we places... now have a point for Bow Bells. Mm. I mean, there are quite a few of us who are now, you know, mentally can picture <laughs> where you are when there's Bow Bells. Yeah, this mm. is yes, that and, close. You know, it's not that exchanges. close to Bow Church. Uh, I mean, these places are all pretty near each other uh, mm -hmm. and would be quite easy to get to, except, of course, this is completely dark and there are no street signs and uh, uh, the, the ground is a mess and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's it's one thing to vaguely know where all these things are. But, you know, if you're expecting a London audience to really know exactly where the things are in relation to each other, you know, where all the various conduits and uh, and um, posts and, and, and markers are in place, then uh, it, it, it's much easier to find this funny. Because I think as you can know that they've gone X way or Y way, etc. Anyway, we've got one more scene to do this session. So uh, let us complete the act. Act three, <coughs> scene four, enter Vandal. Oh, this Kellum Frisco. Ich weit nicht where ich be. Ich go and hit my nose up dit post. And ich go and hit my nose up dan dern post. Oh, the villain. Well, where, ben, uh, where bin ich now? Oh, late sign is dot night, crossed friar. Ja, seker so ist and dit, Mr. Pizarro's huis. Oh, the good chance. Well, ik sal now have the venture. Laurentia, maestris Laurentia. And enter the three sisters above. Who's there? Master Harvey? Master Walgrave? Master Ham? Yeah, my love. Here be Master Highham, your Groot friend. How, How Master Ham? <coughs> How, Master Higham, my good friend? Out alas, is one of the strangers. Peace, you mammoth. Let's see which it is. We may chance teach him a strange trick for his learning. Master Ham, what wind drives you to our house so late? Oh, my leaf, miskin, 
the love told you be so good that it bring me out my bed for you. Ha ha! We know the ass by his ears. It's the Dutchman. What shall we do with him? Peace. May you not know that you are here. But Master Ham, if you will stay a while, that I may see if my father be asleep, I'll make means that we may come together. That shall ik, my love. Is it no well counterfeit? I speak so like Master Hyam as tis possible. Well, what shall we do with this lover? Lover, I should say. What shall we do with him? I crown him with a pie slut. No, we'll use him cleanlier. You know, we have never a sign at the door. Would not the jest prove current to make the Dutchman supply that want? Nay, the fool will cry out and so wake my father. Why then we'll cut the rope and cast him down. And so jest out a hanging. Let's rather dry him up in a basket and so starve him to death in this frosty night. Mm, and sadness well advised. Sister, do you hold him in talk and we'll provide it the whilst. Go to then. Master Ham, oh sweet Master Ham, doth my father think that his unkindness can part you and poor Laurentia? No, no, I have found a drift to bring you to my chamber, if you have but the heart to venture it. Ventre, shall I go to the sea, and be the sea, and o'er the sea, and in the sea, for my sweet love? Then you dare go into a basket? For I know no other means to enjoy your company than so, for my father hath the keys of the door. Shall I climb up taught you? Shall I fly up taught you? Shall I? What said ye? Bid him do it, sister. We shall see his coming. Oh no, so you may catch a fall. There, Master Ham, put yourself into that basket and I will draw you up. But no words, I pray you, for fear my sisters hear you. No, no, no word. Oh, they south wench. Ick come, ick come. Are you ready, Master Ham? Ya, yeah, ick, my salt lady. Merrily then, my wenches. How heavy the ass is. Uh, Master Ham, is there any in the basket but yourself? Night, night. There be no man. Are you up, sir? Night, night. No, never are you like to climb more higher. Sisters, the woodcock's caught. The fool is caged. My soul to light thee. I be no knight of whom we taught you. When can you tell? What, Master Vandal? A weather-beaten soldier, an old wencher, thus to be overreached by three young girls. Ah, Sarah, now we'll brag with Mistress Moore to have as fine a parrot as she hath. Look, sisters, what a pretty fool it is. What a green, greasy, shining coat he hath. An almond for a parrot, a rope for a parrot. Do you mock him, eh? Sigar! Sigurd, I shall save your father. Do when you dare. You see, here is your fortune. Disquiet not my father. If you do, I'll send you with a vengeance to the ground. Well, we must confess we trouble you. And overwatching makes you a wise madman, much more a fool. There's a cushion for you. To bore you through the nose. <laughs> to lay your head on. Couch in your kennel, sleep, and fall to rest. And so good night, for London maids scorn still a Dutchman should be seen to curb their will. Horty, daughter, horty, God's secker kin, will ye not let me come taught you? Ik bid you let me come taught you. What shall ik don? Ik would night for an hundred 
pound Alvaro and De Leon should see me up this manner. Well, what shall I do? I not night call for the wenches will cut the rope and break my neck. I shall here blive till the morning and then I shall call to Mr. Pizarro and make him shave and shite his doctors. Oh, the scallop friends, oh, the scallop frisco, oh, these cruel hurries. <laughs> and the act ends with Vandal in a basket swinging in the rafters. <laughs> Um, this is this is creating an interesting logistical problem of going. We need a basket and a pulley system, um, because you know, uh, so, yeah. So he's hanging there. There's some there's some nice little lines in there. I'd even uh, I especially like the lines where the, uh, there's a couple of there's several points in this where people are cutting people off when they're about to say something really rude, and I do like that as a gag. So it's, you know, uh, crown him with which is probably going to be something like a chamber pot kind of uh, uh, thing. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's um, some, you know, and remember, the scene effectively isn't over because the basket's still hanging there and action's going to keep going. So even though we're going into what we're calling Act 4 next time, um, the action's still going. So it's uh, they're, they're building up different comedy beats here. Alan? I was just thinking, time for a 15-minute interval. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is there is that, actually, for a modern performance. It's quite nice to leave leave them hanging in a basket uh, uh, during the interval because that's, that's, that, that's quite funny. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, make sure that they've got a, a, a an emergency bottle and uh, uh, you know some uh, something to nibble on, and um, yeah, just leave them out there. <laughs> they've the far worse things have been left hanging out during an interval, so uh, I think uh, <laughs> that, that that's perfectly legitimate to have a basket just swinging there. Uh, but yeah, health and safety on that one. God no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, this is not a risk assessment I wish to write. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, thoughts on this uh, this this action, Elizabeth? Uh, currently muted. I just thought you could do so many interesting physical theatre things with this scene, with the kind of the, the, the because the basket doesn't need to literally be there. And, you know, the actors could do some really cool physical theatre stuff. Um, obviously, for an early modern audience, I assume the basket was there and that they actually did pull it up somehow. But for a modern audience, I think you could do some really fun stuff with this. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure a block and tackle is not beyond uh, the strength of three people to raise one. I think I, uh, so. Yeah, and I, I, the whole act is very physical. There's so much physical business that must be going on in the dark. So there's yeah, a lot, a lot of that stuff. Uh, Sarah, I, th I think there's also like comedy potential if you did use a basket to actually use a use a shopping basket like a you know, like a wicker shop, like a small wicker shopping basket with a handle that he's literally just got his feet in. So he's kind of hanging and he's, and he's quite a big chap. So he's sort of hanging, clutching this rope and he's just got, he's just got his feet wedged into this basket and he's just sort of swinging around in the air. Although oh, I don't know if you could li leave him like that for the entire interval, but like, it would be quite funny. Yeah, or a blue Ikea bag, Dan's just written in the chat. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Uh, Helen. Um, there's also Julie when I'm done. Ah. The, um, the, I think that a lot of the Tudor houses would actually have had a little pulley in order to get heavy, heavy objects, especially if it was a merchant's house up above. I mean, I, uh, where I live in London, it's on the fourth floor of an Edwardian block and outside what what had been the kitchen window is a little pulley for rake getting coal up mm. to the kitchen up to the uh to the house so i i'm i i mean i do think uh they've rusted away by now but i do think an awful lot of london houses tall ones would have had a pulley arrangement oh yeah no i'm i'm, I'm sure it's very very plausible it's just uh, you know logistics uh, today. Uh, okay, uh, uh, oh, Julie. I was imagining it a bigger basket, the kind like you always see 
laundry and in the old movies that people are in and out of those baskets the big square ones mm. and if that got raised up you could have a trap door in the back so they could get in and out so they could be raising an empty basket but <laughs> yeah logistically just easier yeah if they placed it on a trap as well they could go uh, go through it underneath and then it's just a matter of um I suppose we could we, you could mic up the basket as well, so you could you could still have the actor doing the lines, but it would be coming out of a speaker, yeah. set up in the hamper. Um, yeah, that would work. Um, that would be safer. <laughs> Where's the fun in that? Well, there, there is something quite nice about the physicality of having some poor bugger trapped in in a basket uh, who is there. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it works. Works. Right. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, reached our uh, allotted uh, amount, as it were, I think. I hope we have. Um, yes, we have. Phew. Um, otherwise, we're really screwed. Uh, so uh, final thoughts from the room. We've uh, uh, mostly been here for the duration. Uh, I think we're generally getting a sense of the, the comedy business and uh, the way the, uh, the, the play is structured. How are we feeling at this stage? Um, logistical uh, issues um, uh, are all very important issues uh to to weigh up as well as uh uh yeah what to do with this um uh rachel any final thoughts i i i i, I don't know if i have anything to add i'm just more want to hear what other people have to say today on this that's pressure on everyone now um you know uh you know but the, the, rachel, rachel is listening uh uh lois any final thoughts uh, well, uh, I don't know. I found this all rather uh, so drawn out for what it was doing. But of course, that is partly because we kept breaking it up. I'm sure, it ought to be played pretty fast. Uh, and I got really fed up with all these foreign accents and uh, uh, people speaking in foreign accents, people imitating people speaking in foreign accents. Yeah, again, this might all be fine in performance, but but at the moment, it's excruciating. Yeah, it's 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 really. I mean, the thing is, when we're doing a cold read, trying to read something that is 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 really quite difficult, it, it, everything gets slower. Whereas mm -hmm. this actually probably needs to, get, you know, it has yeah. to. It's a comedy; it needs to move quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that becomes a big, big, big issue. Um, and um, yeah, trying to figure out how how extreme the accents and the the language used is when it's sustained for such a long period of time. Sarah said earlier, you know, that it's getting it, it's getting a bit tedious. And yeah, maybe it is. Maybe that's 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 a flaw that we uh, we need to work a lot in in rehearsal to make this uh, this this fly to find the right balance between uh, the, uh, accent and, and clarity. because We do need to know what they're saying. And a lot of time, mm -hmm. if you're just listening to it, you know, I, I know what they're saying because I'm reading it along at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very hard to pass a lot of what's going on there. So maybe some compromises might need to be made. Helen, any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I quite like this play. I think it's, it's, got, um, it's got a lot of topicality for the time. It's got a lot of, um, it's got merchants, which I like. It's got um, some women who have what I believe is nowadays known as agency. Um, it's, it, it, it does well. I think Frisco is possibly, uh, the least well-written clown I have encountered in some time. But on the other hand, I think that given someone competent and possibly a little cutting, uh, he could be made to be funny. And the other thing that is giving me a great deal of pleasure is that there isn't nearly the anti-Semitism that we were warned might turn up, or at least not yet. No, we've 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 had a few references to uh, the user in the play having having a big nose, uh, and you know, in performance, but it doesn't seem to be structurally important to any of the other elements so actually with just a few minor adjustments that it, that might be something that disappears very very quickly from from it um it doesn't seem to be the most glaring issue with it i mean the the, the thing that you like about it is possibly another stumbling block for a modern performance is you know it's it's very much of its time it's it's one of the problems city comedies have is when you have slang and in jokes and references to things that haven't existed for 400 years or now exist in a very different structural way 
that becomes a barrier rather than a, than an advantage um, to to uh, to an audience, uh, potentially. But um, is there enough to hang our hats on? Are there enough swinging baskets to uh, to cover those those things? Sarah, I'll go to you next. You can never have too many swinging baskets. Um, I, I yes, I just wanted to put my final thought in now because in just to reply to Helen, I wonder if the fact if the reason we haven't had so much anti-Semitism today is simply because we haven't had a lot of Pizarro. Um, he hasn't really featured so much today as he did yesterday. And I, he, I, I miss him, honestly. Um, there, are, there are things about his character which are, um, you know, troubling and, um, and, and challenging for a, for a contemporary production, but uh, that dynamic that he had uh, with his that he has with his daughters, um, we had a little bit of it today, but we we haven't had as much, and I and I kind of missed that. I felt that that was what was giving the play a certain amount of energy. Um, I do agree, though, with Helen that um, the women are great. Uh, the women are written really well, um, and I kind of want more of them. I could do with less. I could do with less of the suitors. Mm -hmm. uh, both English and and foreign, and uh, and and more of of the daughters actually, um, because like Lois, I, I I found today dragged a bit, but uh, I, I would really like to see this at pace. Uh, you know, we'll presumably do a, a a second read through of it at some point uh, with with no breaks, uh, and it will be interesting then to see how it goes. I also think with the accent thing, I, I don't know if I was directing this. I'd be really tempted um, to actually cast uh, a, a French person and a Dutch person and an Italian person in, in, in the roles of the suitors just to actually cut down on the amount of, oh, look, comedy yeah. foreigners. Uh, and also to actually speed up the dialogue, to make it fluent, because I actually think then, then, then actually what uh, Elizabeth was talking about earlier, the fact that... Um, the tables turn and we and we and and we get to laugh at Frisco, uh, not being able, you know, to oh look, he's speaking funny, but it's because he's English and he can't understand other or, or do other languages. Uh, that 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 would kind of play that aspect of it up, and it would cut down on on the amount of time we had to spend, um, like, yeah, like with that joke of like oh yeah comedy comedy foreigners so that might be one way to kind of like cut it right down and get around it uh alan any final thoughts yeah i mean as has been said the, the whole thing seems to me like a bit like a one-trick pony it's basically oh let's laugh funny foreigners and i think the reason for the lack of the potential we had for anti-semitism is it is simply it's no they're not english so they're all joke oblique hate characters i mean I think I commented yesterday, this this would be a, a shoe in for sponsorship for UKIP or whatever they're calling themselves this week. Um, you know, and the fact that they're also all Europeans, I mean, you, you probably get mainstream funding out of the culture department. <laughs> uh, yeah, though the driver for this, this uh, element here has just been straightforward substitution disguise mm. uh, running around i mean in a sense we've just had a lot of people with an accent we haven't had a lot of people being uh, explicitly mocked uh, for it you know for most of this 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 sequence um it, it's you know it's it's the problem of reading comedy business when you don't actually have much of the comedy business explained we don't have that many stage directions uh, here you know all of the basket almost all of the basket stuff is uh, you know doesn't have helpful stage directions to really make it clear they've brought the basket up halfway or high enough that he'll he can't get out but not all the way up so he can get in um um uh, uh, so yeah so there is there is that too eric any final thoughts yeah i was thinking that this is kind of um what's it called uh like you can also modernize it in some ways, sort of. You can imagine the like, especially this section with the running around in the dark. You can just imagine like them trying to, you know, not enough data to get like a GPS connection or something. Sort of going, I can't see what, what... <laughs> and like the phone. The phone data is just, you know, I don't know. The, the, the torch is not working on on the phone because the battery is too low. Uh, all the typical things that can go wrong, of course. Um, but 
I mean, obviously that that you have to consider um, removing, well, not removing, but like you know, taking into account the racism, misogyny, xenophobia, and all that stuff. But I mean, assuming you perform it as is with moderate, you know, adaptation of things, yeah, it could be. I think it could be performed like that. Uh, Elizabeth, any final thoughts? Yeah, um, I was I was really enjoying actually listening to everyone's feedback um, on the text. I was thinking that I I really enjoyed the three girls. I really I really like them. I think that they play off each other really well. I like the fact that they don't seem to want to be married at all. They don't seem to want to marry to to really want to marry anyone. They kind of seem to want to be free. And Pissarro Pissarro's place in that is hilarious because he just he kind of always seems to play the role of sort of the sort of the even like the dirty old man or the belligerent cantankerous father um and you know when he concocts this plan that the three suitors that he desires will turn up at their house at night i think that's also quite raunchy and quite funny but I do agree with people who have said um, tonight that it, that it seemed to drag a bit. But I think that's to do with how we've we've performed it. I think that uh, a second look on this would be great. Um, running it at pace would be really good. Um, and then you could do, I just was thinking that you could do so many interesting things with this, with casting, with, you know, with, with casting different um, against type casting against type maybe casting the three suitors uh the male the english suitors as women maybe i think that you could do some really really interesting things as a director with this with this text lovely dan you have not been here for the previous session uh what do you think of the show so far so having not been here it's hard for me to speak to how the foreigners have been treated in it what i can say is today it didn't seem not even nearly as bad, but almost not bad at all. I'm not saying that there isn't a joke being written there against um, the fact that they're foreign at all. It's just that it wasn't coming out so clearly or so obviously. And those who were trying to copy, to become, to pretend to be someone else were, were being mocked for not being able to speak the languages. So I agree with Elizabeth on that point, that it, it really wasn't that bad and the idea that it seemed to me that the playwrights seemed to know these, I mean, had some sense of some of these languages um, rather than just mocking it outright and just, oh, okay, you're going to mispronounce this and mispronounce that. There seems to be some knowledge of it. And so that leads me to say that if we were going to do this today, it's unfortunate because I think that it would have had to have been filmed or staged 20 years ago when we're watching an archive production for people to accept it. Because if today you were doing it, you would absolutely, I think, need to have, as Sarah was suggesting, um, somebody Dutch playing Dutch and somebody French playing French, because otherwise just people would be up in arms about, oh, you're mocking, you're mocking everyone's if just for being foreign there. Otherwise, um, I don't think it's, um, it's just about that. I think there's a lot of great physical comedy and lots of, um, lo lots of opportunity to have a lot of sight gags um, in that um, Comedia dell'arte style. And so I would absolutely like to see this being staged at pace rather than, I mean, this is the first reading, obviously we can't do, you know, breeze through this. And also people, you know, we're not gonna, it's, it might not, we may not have these people who actually can speak these languages to play these parts, but at least have the opportunity to go over your lines so you're not just, you know, skipping, like fumbling over every word um, there. And so that it's less treat, that's less, less being funny for being foreign, obviously. And just and you're just saying the lines, and that's it. And we know that you are from somewhere else, and that's all. Mm. Uh, Lynn, any final thoughts? Yes. Well, I I liked this play better out of the gate than I do now. It's um, there. There are some things that I'm I'm finding hard to um, hard to enjoy. I mean, you know, the the xenophobia, um, the the English chauvinism. Yeah, that's just that's. Just, that's something we've talked a lot about, um, but I'm I'm very troubled by the way Pizarro treats his his daughters like livestock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have these guys breed them and then they'll have to buy them. Like, <laughs> um, so that's that's kind of troubling. And um, 
No, that's really troubling. I'm really bothered by that. Uh, and um, and I'm also not sure I like the epicycles. You know, the 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 complication of um, two of the foreign lovers are going to be diverted um, by Frisco's plan, but then Frisco is going to take the place of one of the lovers, um, and rather than the Dutchman showing up himself but then they get rid of him so he doesn't seem very bright that like they convince him he's not at the the house where he lives like what he's not very smart and then we have this young woman from a neighbor woman who's going to be spending the night because her house is full of house guests we'll see how if that actually comes to, to anything these are feeling a little like unnecessary complications um to me at this point it it, it may all shake out really really cleverly i do kind of hope pizarro redeems himself somehow and the the foreign suitors aren't completely humiliated that they get some kind of compensation so that um um we don't feel like you know too bad for them at the end so i'm kind of suspending judgment but um but uh, it's it's gone down in my estimation as it's gone along unfortunately uh julie do you have any final thoughts to throw in Yes, to follow up on that, I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself very bothered by the idea that Frisco would try to impose on one of the girls because that's what it kind of sounded like he was going to do, that he was trying to get a, get a leg up on there, so to speak, because that's really not the 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 part of a fool or a of yeah. honorable servant or anything like that, or or if they do, it's somebody of their own class. You know, because she's, I mean, they're merchant's daughters, but they're still well above his class. And so, I mean, but he didn't state any other reason for dressing up. Because usually it'd be, oh, I'll, I'll dress up like him and I'll lead his friends on a merry chase or something. But no, he was just like, hey, this is my chance. And mm -hmm. like, he thinks they wouldn't recognize him also. Anyway, it just, that's that's just been pecking at me. I hate to leave it on that note, though, being the last comment. <laughs> no, no, it's it's fine. Uh, we, 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 we yes, say, say what we got um, uh, very briefly, um, Eric. Well, there was also the what's called um, like the cloak switch is basically something that happened also in uh, humorous. Uh, Every man is humor, I think, which, uh, you know, led to sort of foolish uh, gags about being in trouble with the law so that might sort of turn up later yeah we've uh, we've got players on top of each other doing slightly similar things uh who would have thought that would ever happen um uh so uh we are uh, uh on the verge of a third and final session where we find out whether the play lands or not how a comedy ends is really important to its viability as a text um uh because if <laughs> Sometimes they really don't go where you want them to. Uh, so all that remains to thank all the wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading. Thank you very much and goodbye. Next time we ask the question, duckity-doo or duckity-don't. <laughs>